we briefly looked at um, understanding the system, the overview of problems, the variety of sufferings and pains we experience, and the origins, at least some initial view of the origin. So these inner problems, all of these kinds of mental uh, sufferings that we experience, along with these big, um, none of these four messengers, these four big uh, milestones that uh, that frame our life. And it began looking at the origins that um, uh, lead to the accumulation of these sufferings and problems. So I want to just complete this view of these four truths to make sure that we've got a, an overarching view of the system before we dive in more to more fully understanding these problems and origins. Uh, it said that if you can fully understand and directly experience these problems, and especially the origins, but even just the problems, you'll you'll have basically the solution is imminent. You'll free yourself from all of the the challenges and sufferings that you experience. And that is the meaning of uh, freedom here and the path. And so, uh, not going to fully understand all of these first two aspects just yet. I want to make sure we've got the overview. So these two are the things that we need to abandon. These are what we need to attain. Freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from all suffering, all problems. Uh, in particular, by accomplishing freedom from the origin, the, the accumulation of these problems, the mechanisms by which these problems uh, mount and are amassed in our life. So the main point here is to emphasize that freedom from such suffering is possible. And all of the, you know, the claims that people would make of, uh, you know, um, awakening or extinguishing all of the sufferings we experience, they're all variations on this freedom. Um, one of the... Um, uh, one of the most powerful of the origins of all of our problems is uh, craving, um, this constant craving we experience. And so if you think about um, one dramatic example of craving is addiction, like a, addiction to a substance, or, but we have addiction to all kinds of things. Uh, the freedom means you have kicked that addiction. You've become free from that addiction. You've become free from all of our cravings, um, cravings for certainty, cravings for, um, you know, the world to go exactly the way we expected it to go and we wanted to go, we become free from those cravings and thus we become utterly at peace. And so this is the, the goal here with freedom. How is that possible to accomplish? Is it possible to accomplish? Um, it is uh, possible to accomplish through following the path. And the path really just means what is it that helps us to overcome these problems by abandoning these origins. Um, and so these two go together as what we need to accomplish, following a specific path that helps to undermine all of these origins that give rise to all of these problems. And as a result of following that path, achieving greater and greater degrees of freedom until eventually we we basically cut all of the addictions that we have to, um, you know, especially these subtle things like craving for uh, certainty and um, uh, addiction to uh, certain views that um, hold us separate from others and hold us separate from the world. So that's what we're uh, talking about here. So uh, to dig in a little bit more on this freedom aspect, um, so we can understand at least a couple of different kinds of uh, freedom, right? Um, so temporary freedoms um, and um, we can call uh, stable freedoms. So there's some debate about whether permanent freedom is possible or not. It, Permanent freedom is sometimes we talk about, you know, you can attain permanent freedom from this and permanent freedom from that. Really, we're craving permanence. Um, and so there's some subtlety, some nuance here. There is nothing permanent in the world. Um, but what we are really trying to accomplish are these stable realizations. So, um, so a partial freedom... Uh, or a complete freedom. Uh, 
So these stable freedoms that are actually a complete freedom from all of these different kinds of suffering. And sometimes if you accomplish that, you refer to this as uh, extinguishing, um, extinguishing all of the various sufferings and problems, and sometimes referred to as awakening and lots and lots of other names given to, um, yeah, uh, like gone to peace, gone to happiness, all of these kinds of things. Um, all just names that are given to this complete freedom from all of these kinds of sufferings and sources of problems. Um, so hopefully that gives you some sense for the, um, the variety, just sort of spreading that out there a little bit, that really this is what we're looking for. Eventually we're looking for a solution to our problems. Now going back here, when we're talking about a solution to problems like this, solution to death, aging, sickness, birth, a lot of this has become uh, mythologized in a way. Um, what does it mean to become free from birth? What does it mean to become free from death? And, you know, when traditionally mythologies have been created around things, they, they have some functioning. They have, mythologies arise for two reasons. One um, is because people have a more simplistic understanding, like a childlike understanding. Um, if I were to, you know, we're an initial level of understanding. And so sometimes you can explain to children, you know, if you just go to school and graduate and graduate college and so forth, then you'll be all set, right? And so you're, you're giving them some future vision to work towards some goal. And you're kind of promising that, you know, all of the problems they need to worry about will be solved um, just by getting through whatever is the next milestone you're trying to encourage somebody on. As we know, um, that's a simplistic view, right? We're always hoping for a solution. And, and so sometimes we, um, um, we, we accept a simplified view of the world that is temporarily uh, okay. Uh, temporarily sort of points us in a, in a beneficial direction, even if it's not absolutely correct. So sometimes we mythologize to, you know, something to simplify it, to help people to understand who may be still in early levels of understanding. And sometimes we mythologize also for marketing and that uh, marketing to try to encourage, uh, make something seem grandiose, amazing, attractive, um, and we need that in a sense, like we, we need, you know, all you have to do is X and then you'll be fine, right? Now that is oversimplified and we find that once we do X, you know, whether it's getting a job or getting a partner or graduating something, or, um, you know, or, or overcoming one level of addiction, or whatever it is that we've accomplished, it's not the final challenge. Right. And so we need to understand um, we need to understand what what this freedom really means in, in a deeper sense so we can really understand the meaning of gone to peace, gone to happiness. So when, when we talk about becoming free from inner problems like death, uh, I mentioned this idea of uh, becoming free from the second arrow. Uh, the first arrow is OK, we're going to die. The second arrow is how much suffering and angst and pain and misery and fear does that cause us, right? We layer mental suffering on top of the physical suffering. So, uh, for example, just moving this off to the side a little bit. Um, one way to understand the sufferings and, and our way of becoming free from sufferings is that often our... Um, um, you know, physical pain is one one thing, but then we have uh, mental pain that is layered on top of that, and sometimes that mental pain can become even bigger than that physical pain. And so you have these feedback loops um, where if you really, really, really hate um, the physical pain that you're experiencing, um, it causes you a lot more mental pain. 
So for example, if you, um, you know, reject or fight against this mental pain, then as a result, or this physical pain, you have more mental pain, but as a result of that, you in turn experience more uh, physical pain. So you get this positive feedback loop or a feedback loop that is quite problematic, right? Um, where <clears throat> the more you uh, the more you reject or fight against something, the more unbearable it becomes, the more you feel like you can't even deal with this. And so sometimes you get this cascading loop where physical pain leading to mental pain and mental pain increasing our physical pain and kind of obsessiveness. Um, now, all of that can get cut. And so this idea of becoming free from inner problems and suffering, um, and it is this, these minds are all basically obsessive, especially these craving minds. These are uh, craving, um, you know, craving a state where we're free from some of these problems. So let me see if I can align this. Craving is particularly challenging, problematic mind um, because it really leads to this deep, this profound rejection um, where we don't want to, um, yeah, we're craving something other than what we have right now. We're craving freedom from pain. We're craving freedom from fear. We're craving freedom from aging, sickness, these kinds of things. And our ignorance makes us, our ignorance actually feeds into the craving. Um, and so ignorance really is called the root of all of these delusions. And craving in turn actually tends to feed into hatred. And so often um, it cascades like this. So we sometimes talk about these three as being three poisons, um, the craving, the hatred, and the ignorance. But within these, the um, the ignorance is the root of these, and ignorance is, is the root of all of these sufferings. So because we believe it's possible for there to be a permanence in the world, then uh, we crave that permanence. We crave freedom from any kind of discomfort. And if we can't get it, we hate, hate, hate that situation. And so this hating or rejection of mental pain um, basically makes that mental pain grow worse and more unbearable. So this is, um, this is the kind of cascading feedback loop that we're talking about becoming free from. So when you become temporarily free from any of these kinds of sufferings, it is by virtue of reducing your hatred, your anger, your craving, your ignorance, and that reduces this mental pain aspect, becomes smaller, smaller, smaller. Um, eventually, though, you want all of that mental pain to become extinguished, right? Um, to cease altogether. And... Um, so in that context, there may be some kind of physical pain, right? But the physical pain is just a feeling. Uh, and so in a sense, you know, feelings, they don't have to be the end of the world, right? So there's many references to, uh, you know, the founders of the system, um, you know, experiencing backaches and, you know, cutting their foot with a rock and, you know, nausea and sickness and all kinds of things that speak to physical pain. And yet everybody says, oh, oh, he's free. He's got this complete freedom. He's totally extinguished all of his suffering. He's awakened from all of the suffering. In fact, um, awakening is where we get this term, um, uh, awakened one. Um, or Buddha. Um, so this is this term Buddha literally means awakened one. Awakening itself is Bodhi uh, is the, the term. So all of these have somewhat, you know, famous uh, Ali Sanskrit origins, but that's what we're talking about here. Um, that an awakened one is free from all of this kind of mental pain, all of this suffering. In a sense, they still experience this physical pain, but it's just a feeling. Pain, pleasure, 
you know, it's like if you look out your window and it's ugly or beautiful, you know, either way, you can you can deal with that. Um, it's seen at a distance. It's not uh, causing you agony, right? So anyway, this is just introducing some of this um, uh, this practice of freedom and what this means, or this accomplishment of freedom and what this means. And then in the next talk, we'll look at uh, this path.